All right, folks, I'm just going to show you a little bit about uh, parsing settings today. And what I mean by parsing settings is um, regardless of who you're dispatched by, there are some things that need to be trimmed off of your dispatch messages. So that way it enables it to be mapped better. Generally, this only applies to mapping, but you can also do some things for your uh, how it appears message wise as well. So I'm going to show you some things on how to do that today. So a little disclaimer, you do have to have administrative access to be able to do this. So either A, uh, you can request that from your system administrator in your department, or you can show them this video and help them out a little bit. So prioritizing settings are to do with um, basically filtering and translating it and making it to like a, a friendly format for Google Maps, which is the primary mapping service that I am responding uses. Uh, to able be able to understand it as well as for instance what you may refer to something or what dispatch refers to something uh, may not be what google maps refers to it as uh, one area may be known as one name when google maps actually um, refers to it as another so that's just kind of an idea of uh, some things to look at i have on all done in place but i'm going to start from scratch i won't be able to save these Normally there'll be a save button right here that'll allow you to do that. So let's go into here, all right, and I'm just going to do the one for direct. That is the one that comes directly from dispatch, from their dispatch software. You most likely will have already had Valley Relay set up, hence why I'm focusing on the Valley Direct. I like to split these up into two different methods. On-screen display, text and pager message, and email messages I keep as one group, and then address mapping rule I select all on its own. So I want to show you how to do your address mapping rule first because that is um, typically the more crucial one that we're worried about. And I've shown you in a previous video of how this little jumbled mess uh, comes up here. So we're going to go ahead and uh, take care of this delete any message that contains so when you're doing parsing settings everything is in a rule alright and it all goes by order so order matters so for instance I'm gonna put this at the very beginning and I've showed this in a previous video tiny URL there is probably not going to be an address out there that has tiny URL in it like a household address or a civic address so that's why it's fairly safe to put that in there Although I wouldn't use Tiny, um, simply because I do know of some road names and some street names. Uh, Tiny Parish Road, for instance, which is a community in uh, Belcher Street, Kings County. Um, that's an example. So you, you want to make sure with your rules that they won't be misconstrued as um, part of another word. For instance, if you have RD and you want to change that to road, that's fine. But if you know RD is in the name of the street it'll <laughs> translate the RD in that word to road so you have to be careful of that so that's my first one I've got rid of that stupid message so now let's just focus on this stuff okay the actual addresses I'm gonna show you something here and I'm gonna see if I can get it to do it if you can see um, it's three separate lines here. It doesn't wrap around. These are three separate lines. So I'm going to go into Microsoft Word. I'm going to paste that in here, okay? Does anybody remember the stupid symbols that always used to come up on uh, Microsoft Word sometimes if you hit the paragraph button? So let's show and hide the messages there, eh? So there's a hard carriage return here, as you can see by that arrow. There's a hard carriage return here. And that's the end of the paragraph. So we have one hard carriage return and two hard carriage returns. And what that is basically means it's a term from the days of typewriters. Hard carriage return is basically hitting enter. So let's go back. Now that we know there's a hard carriage return there and there is a hard carriage return here, we can use that to our advantage. So first off, what I want to do is I do want to look at my rules. And I do know that sometimes, if depending on how the call is received, a dispatch time will be put on that first line before that first hard carriage return. So let's go to delete everything before the blank of blank. 
delete everything before the first instance. Now, how the heck do I put a hard carriage return? So you can go up here and there's a tip and it says you can use slash r slash n in your parsing rules in order to treat a hard carriage return as a regular character. So delete everything before the second instance. Well, we're going to be first because we want to get rid of anything that potentially could be going in here. So you need to go slash r slash n. Done. Whoop. I did that wrong. That was backslash. Slash r slash n. That will delete everything before the first instance. So if there would have been text here before that first instance, you would have been golden. You're not going to notice any difference here because I don't have any times right now on these. So that's fine. Let's go back up. Now I want to delete everything after. What I want to try to do is this commercial fire alarm or lift assist. Google Maps is not going to like that. It's going to mess things up. So we need to get rid of that. So I want you to go back up and select a rule. Delete everything after the blank of blank. So I want to delete everything after this. So this is the first hard carriage return and this is the second hard carriage return. So let's go back to the screen itself. So now I want to delete everything after the second instance because if you go back, I want to get rid of this commercial fire alarm. I just want 129 Centennial Drive, comma, Bridgetown. So let's delete everything after the second instance of hard carriage return. So slash r slash n. Whoop, I'm doing the backward slash again. Slash r slash n. So now what we've done is we've stripped the commercial fire alarm. So now all my maps will now just be the address. So if you see commercial fire alarm's gone. Uh, lift assist is gone. Uh, structure fire, barn slash warehouse, Port Lauren, Bridgetown, Lawrencetown is gone. So really we've just cleaned everything up and got the meat and potatoes of what we need. So let's go one step further. Um, I will say with I am responding, the Google Maps for some reason sometimes maps out of country. So this tends to help a lot of that. Replace the blank of blank with blank. So now that hard carriage return is still there. Slash R slash N. So I want to go to second instance because that's what this is. Replace the second instance with comma Nova Scotia. Canada. So now it is going to force, we can actually get rid of this space. All right. So it will force Google Maps to now always look for 259 Granville Street West, Bridgetown, Nova Scotia, Canada. It will always force 921 Brenton Road, Port Lauren, Nova Scotia, Canada. It will always force 2414 Highway 201, Nova Scotia, Canada. So that will absolutely force it 100% of the time to look for those addresses in Nova Scotia, Canada. Pretty much at this point, you're done. I, if you do get dispatched by valid communications, I would also recommend putting this rule in. There we go. Do not post transmit identical dispatch messages prior to dispatch within, within preceding minutes. So if we add another department to your profile at dispatch, what will happen is we have to resend everything and this will hide it from you. So you won't get like double messages or you're going down the road and you'll get a duplicate message. So this should be back up here and this should be underneath the tiny URL before anything's edited. Because again, it goes in this order. So first, I am responding, we'll search for tiny URL. If it's there, it'll delete everything. So none of these other rules apply.
Then if that message has been received in the last 30 minutes, the first 30 characters of that message is the same as one that was received in the past 30 minutes, it will delete that message. Then it goes through and starts formatting it better for the map. So then it will delete everything before the first instance of slash r slash n, and then it will delete everything after the second instance of slash r slash n, and then replace the second instance of slash r slash n with Nova Scotia, Canada. You go up here, you hit save. Again, if I hit save for me, it's not going to work because I already have that in there. So let's go back out and we're going to do Valley Direct, on screen message, text, email messages. So this is how it appears to everyone. So again, first, let's go in here and do not text anything or send anything that create contains that tiny URL. All right, let's put that other one in there that we don't want duplicate messages sent out. So if the first 30 characters match, we want to get rid of those duplicate messages. So I use 30 and 30, that's my rule. So now we got it kind of pretty. So that's basically all you have to do for that. Once you do that, everything's golden, and Bob's your uncle. You've just got rid of all the duplicate text messages. And again, hit save, and you're done. I hope this helps, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned, I should be posting more as time goes on. But uh, enjoy, have a good day. Thank you.